So, about a year ago, I made a video on how to make unbreakable tools in Pinker's Construct. However, my example only covered the pickaxe. I simply said you could translate the instructions to other tools. However, some other tools are a little more complicated than the pickaxe, and may be a little confusing to translate my instructions to. So, I've decided to redo my tutorial for every single tool. Hopefully this will clear a few things up, and I've also formatted things so they're easier to understand what you can and cannot do with these tools. And if you enjoy the video, please be sure to subscribe. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, now I'm in this little smithing area I built. So, so some people were running out of modifier slots, and I tested, and it still works, so something, so something I said wasn't clear enough. So, I'm gonna explain what I did more clearly. The, what I did in the last video is called embossing, and it's basically when you take the main tool part of a tool and put it on a tool that already exists without swapping its effect. So essentially you're combining that tool head's effect, and you can only emboss each tool once. So what I did in the last tutorial was I made a pickaxe that was nice and fast and strong, and I embossed the paper effect on it to get an extra modifier slot. So you get these crystals here, green blue and magma crystals and a block of gold, put them around the tool, and then put the pickaxe head you wanted to emboss, and then put the tool right here, and then you'll see it'll have both effects while keeping the stats of the original tool, and we'll be using that a lot. So if you don't understand what I said, pay attention because I'm about to repeat the process and make the tools. So that's what we will need to emboss, and these reinforcements will add the reinforced effect to the tools. So basically the reinforced effect is like unbreaking, but Tinker's Construct version of it. And if you add five reinforcements, you get unbreakable. And we're gonna figure out how to get five reinforcements on there in this video. And now for the recipes of the items I just showed. Ooh, creepy cape noise. The recipes for the items I just shown are as follows. For the reinforcements, you will need a cast of any kind it doesn't matter, and eight obsidian around it. And then to get these crystals, you'll need these slimy mud blocks, and then you smelt these in a furnace. So to make slimy mud, for the green and blue slimy mud, you put four of the respectively colored slime balls. So for the blue slimy mud, it's blue slime balls, and for green slimy mud, it's just default Minecraft slime balls, and any type of sand, and a piece of dirt or podzel, and you will get the slimy mud and throw that in a furnace, and you will get these crystals. Now the magma bud is a bit different. You need two red slime balls, two magma cream, a soul sand and a nether rack. And now if you're not sure how to get these other two sli types of slime balls, the blue and the magma ones, basically there are slime islands. This island I'm on is actually an edited version of a slime island and you'll see one over there uh, that they float around in the overworld and nether. You there are slimes on that island, you kill them to get those slime balls to make these muds, which then you smelt to get the crystals. So now it is time to make our first Tool. So we're gonna start off with the unbreakable pickaxe, and now you'll notice uh, I put these in a shulker box similar to last time. And here are how, is how I formatted the ingredients. I'm gonna call this column the important tool parts. These tool parts shouldn't be paper because paper has bad stats, so if you put it on the important slots that means it'll ruin the stats. Like the pickaxe head will make it really slow if it's a pa got a paper pickaxe head. However, ne that brings us to the next column on the shulker box here that I've set up. This is, I'm calling this column the unimportant tool parts. These tool parts are good for giving your pickaxe effects you want it to have, and because they don't affect the stats that much. So like the binding and the tool rod, I don't think modify the pickaxe's stats at all, besides giving them the respective uh, modifier that the tool part comes with. And lastly, we have this column, which is just one for most of them, which is the embossing. And this is what we're going to emboss. So we don't make the pickaxe with this. We make it with these parts. The final note I want to give for the unimportant column is that only one of the t parts in the unimportant column has to be made of paper. The other parts can be anything else. For simplicity, I'm just going to go with cobalt for most tools and manulin for most weapons since those are since manulin does the most damage on weapons and cobalt is the fastest tool material. However, if you want different effects or you have mods that add more kinds of tool parts, feel free to like replace this cobalt tool rod with anything else or if you made the paper 
or if you made the tool rod paper, you can make this binding anything else. So basically anything, only one per part in this column needs to be paper. So without further ado, I'm also going to put a skip to go right here to skip the explanations if you already know what you're doing. So we're going to get started. So we're going to take these out. I should be shift clicking them actually. And this is what the final result should look like. Unbreakable pickaxe and it doesn't take any damage. I'm going to break the gold blocks for an example. See, it's not breaking a sweat. And this is what it should look like in the end. So now let's get to making the pickaxe. We're gonna throw these parts in, rem because remember, we don't use this quite yet. We're not getting to that. We instead use the important part and not any of the paper parts. And now we're going to throw this in the middle of, you're gonna click this icon after and you're gonna throw it into the middle, so right here. And then this is where your embossing parts come to use. You only need one of each of these, but I have a stack since I'm going to be making a bunch of tools. So you're going to throw these. It doesn't matter which order these go in, by the way. These can be in any order. I'm going to just demonstrate that right now. And then, last but not least, put in your paper part. And then this will have writable 2 and 5 modifiers, which will allow us to put 5 reinforcements on here. So I'm going to take these out. And then you're going to put this back in. I don't actually know why I took it out. And now you're going to put five reinforcements on there. So it's a little annoying to get all those reinforcements because of all the obsidian you need. But yeah, so that's why I recommend making this pickaxe first because it will make getting all that obsidian really easy because it's fairly fast. So, okay, so now I've explained everything I need to. So the future, when we make all these, it'll have less words. I just needed to get some explanations out of the way for new users. So our next shulker box here is the shovel. So we're gonna get that out. Here are the unimportant parts. So again, one, only one of these needs to be paper. Here's the important part, and here's our embossing. And here's what it should look like when we're done with it. So let's just get started. We're gonna click the shovel part right here, and I'm gonna throw these in. And we have our nice cobalt shovel. Of course, if you chose a different material for the parts that are exchangeable, then uh, it won't be cobalt. I'm just, again, I'm just using cobalt for the example. Now let's throw these in. Bam! Now we have five modifier slots. And just like that, it is now about to be unbreakable. There we go. It is time for the th third shulker box. The hatchet. So, here we are. Here's the important part, the unimportant parts, the embossing, and the final result. So I'm going to click the hatchet part here, throw these in. Now I got myself a nice cobalt hatchet. I'm going to emboss the paper head. Now we got five modifier slots. And now... We're going to reinforce it up to Unbreakable. And there it is. And the fourth shulker box we're going to open is the Matok. So, unfortunately, there's only one uh, unimportant part. So you can't swap anything out because only the tool rod doesn't affect the stats. However, you can still swap these out, but these have a direct impact on the stats. So just keep that in mind. So you're kind of limited. Uh, with what you can swap out for the Matic, but do what you feel is best as long as you make this a paper tool rod. And finally, you probably noticed right here, there's two of these. Uh, Maddox can either have a paper shovel head or a paper axe head. It does not matter which one you emboss, but I thought I would just clear that up anyways. So I'm going to go with the axe head for embossing. And here's what the final product should look like. So we're going to open up, click that, throw the matter parts in, and then we're going to go back here and emboss that paper head onto the matic and take this out. Whoops. And then we're going to put these right here. One, two, three, four, five, and there it is. Unbreakable matic. And now the fourth shulker, the fifth shulker box, excuse me, here is the comma. So we're going to get the parts out for the comma here. It's very similar to the pickaxe, just with a 
just with a comma head instead. So we're going to take these out and here's what the final results should look like. So now let's go ahead and go here. I'm going to throw in my parts, cobalt comma, and now we're going to get our paper head embossed on there. So now it has five modifier slots. And now, time to reinforce it up to the unbreakable level. And there we go. It is an unbreakable comma. And the next one I'm going to be covering is the hammer. So let's go ahead and get that out. So we have a... So we only have the unimportant part is the tool rod. But there are three important parts. So you have a little bit of leeway, but beware as just like with the Matic. They will, they will uh, change the mining speed. So I'm going to open the hammer part here. Do this, and this, and then put these in here. And there we go, I have my hammer. Now I'm going to emboss that paper hammer head onto my hammer. Like so. Perfect. It's now time to get the reinforcements settled away. And it is unbreakable now. Uh, next up is the excavator. So let's crack this open and take a look. So we have a we have four parts here, so it's pretty so you got a lot of leeway on what you can change up here, especially since you have one part that doesn't have to be paper here. Let's go ahead and put this together and here's what the finished product should look like. It should have unbreakable. Now let's open up excavator here. And here are all the parts. Now, throw that in here. Surround it with the embossing parts, and bam! Five modifiers. And then let's just do this. And it is now unbreakable. So there it is, my unbreakable excavator. Alright, and the next tool I'm going to be covering here is the scythe. Didn't come out for some reason, so let's go ahead and crack this open. So we have two! So we have three slots here, so one of them has to be paper, but these two, doesn't matter. These can be whatever you want, from what I've seen. Doesn't seem to affect the stats. Let's get these out. And let's go ahead and just throw these in here. Uh, like so. And now I'm going to emboss it. And just like that, we are on the way to having an unbreakable scythe. And there it is. And the next one is the broadsword. So we're going to open this up. And now I've switched to manulin because cobalt has the fastest mining speed. However, mining speed doesn't matter as much for swords. But Manulin has the highest damage out of the default parts. It is time to assemble our unbreakable sword. And this is what it should look like. Oh, I, ac I messed it up. I forgot to put the last modifier on. There we go. The example here is now fixed. Uh, sorry about that. You see it's unbreakable. And we're about to replicate that process now. So, here we are. Manulin broadsword. And I'm going to now throw this around and then emboss the the paper sword blade on there and now just get the five reinforcements in there it is an unbreakable broadsword that does a whopping 10.72 attack damage all right and now we are going to do the broadsword's brother the longsword so it's basically the same as the long broadsword, except just a different type of guard. And here is what it should look like when it's all done. So I'm going to open this up, throw in my parts like so. Now get the embossment done. Perfect. And then all I have to do left is just reinforce it up to unbreakable. Just like that. You see, it is unbreakable now. And 
uh, it does 11.14 attack damage, so that's a pretty strong sword. Now it's time for the next one, the rapier. So we're going to open this up, and it's, again, very similar to the sword, just with a different type of guard. And this one should do 5.8 attack damage when we're done with it, and of course will be unbreakable. Alright, gonna just throw these in like so. Great. And now, simply emboss that. Oops. And then... Voila! Unbreakable rapier. Now it is time to do the fry pan. <laughs> I like the fry pan, it's funny. But unfortunately, there's basically no room you for uh, tweaking here. You have the head and the rod, and that's literally it. So the pan head is all you can do, pretty much, for customizing it. All right, and then just bam, bam, two parts. Again, not really much room for customization here. And then I'm going to emboss that paper pan head on there. All right. Now we have it embossed there, so it's time to get the reinforcements all planned out. And I'm... looks like I ran out of that stack, so I'm just gonna grab more reinforcements. And just like that, it should be unbreakable. And moving right along to the next weapon is the battle sign. So I'm gonna open this. Again, just like the fry pan, just two parts, not really much room for customization here with the parts that you can use, but let's just assemble it. So just one, two, and then get that paper sign plate on there. And then, now that I got the paper sign plate on, I'm just gonna put my five reinforcements on there. And there we have it. There's our unbreakable battle sign. And now we have probably the most powerful weapon in this entire arsenal, the cleaver. So it this is a really good weapon because you see it does 18.2 attack damage. This will kill, I tried and this will, oh, another creepy cape noise. This will kill a creeper in one hit even if you don't crit. Not sure about zombies because they have slight armor. And not only that, look, there's a bunch of parts, so you can swap out the one unimportant part for an extra effect. All right, now I'm gonna go over here, get my right in, and now I'm gonna emboss that paper cleaver blade on there, and then just get my unbreakable reinforcements handy. There it is. Look at that. Alright, now we're heading into the bows. Alright, I tried my best with the bow. It's not really it's not really that good. Uh I don't know if the other strings mean anything, so I just use the default bow string. I you can use different bow string if you like other bow strings. But as you can see, the only parts that we can the only other parts are important, so I I used paper and manual, and, and as you can see, it only has one bonus damage for the arrows, but if you think you have better bow combinations for the bows I'm about to show off, please let me know, and I'll, if, if you have good enough bows that are better than mine that are still unbreakable, I'll pin your comment. So let's take out these bows. So as you can see here, we have two paper parts, but we're only going to use one of them for the tool. The other is going to be for embossing, as you didn't see earlier. And I'm just going to emboss that. Now we got writable too. So then I'm just going to slap my reinforcements on here. And it is now unbreakable. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tool here. And that is the longbow. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And yeah, there are actually four unimportant parts here. One of them is the bowstring. Uh, I didn't have enough rows, so I just put it here. But... Yeah, let's go ahead and unpack this. So basically, same as the bow, I tried I tried my best, but if you think you have a better unbreakable bow recipe, then fire away. Pun intended. So, I'm gonna craft that. What? Why do I... And I accidentally gave myself an extra bow limb. 
you don't need to have two of them, you only need one bow limb of your choice and one paper one. So anyways, let's just emboss the paper bow limb on there. And then make it unbreakable. And there it is, it's now unbreakable. And the final thing I'm going to be covering here is the crossbow. Let's just open this up. So, yeah, we have it. Interestingly enough, it only requires one bow limb. Eh, but that doesn't matter. It's just a weird recipe. And let's make our crossbow. So just put it in. And then I'm going to get my paper bow limb embossed on there. Now time to reinforce it. Okay, now it's unbreakable. Well, as you can see, now that is every type of tool unbreakable. Once again, the shirt, the arrow, bolt, and shuriken weren't covered due to the fact they have no durability. However, I'm not d quite done with the video yet. As you may have recalled earlier, even though I used mostly the same tool type, I said only one of the parts in the unimportant rows had to be paper. So for p everything else, you can actually swap it out. It just I just chose cobalt again because it's the fastest mining speed and manulin because it's the highest damage. However, we can't modify it with any modifier items because there are no more modifier slots unless you have mods that allow you to add more modifier slots. So I'm going to hop into creative mode real quick just to show you some things you can do with these tools. So one of the unimportant parts was the binding and tool rod on the pickaxe. So I left the binding as paper so I can swap the tool rod to anything I want. So I can give this pickaxe auto smelt while keeping its fast mining cobalt properties and of course unbreakableness. So for example, I'm going to get some iron ore here and then hop back into survival. And as you can see, it auto smelts it right up. Another thing you can do is get a sponge tool rod here and you can swap that out. And now the squeaky effect can give you a nice unbreakable silk touch pickaxe. So if I grab a stack of stone here and go into survival mode, you can see I get to keep the stone. So yeah, and some of you guys, oops, I hit, walked into my disposal cactus. And yes, some of you guys actually brought this up in the comments. Those comments are on screen now. Thank you to the people who made them. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So pretty cool, you can have an auto smelting pickaxe, a uh, silk touch pickaxe, and just a regular old pickaxe, all unbreakable. So there's a lot of things you can do by swapping out and using different tool parts where it's swappable. However, I'm not going to do that all day. Those are just the couple examples I wanted to show off. Uh, but remember, since you can swap out any of those unimportant tool parts that weren't paper, you can take advantage of other effects. So yeah, I hope that cleared some things up about my original Unbreakable Tools video and made it clear for everyone and hopefully newer Tinker's Construct players were able to understand how to make it and get the tools working. And that's about it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for combinations using Unbreakable Tools or if I made any mistakes or you're confused on anything and I'll try to leave a reply. Without further ado, see ya.